was just amazing and such such a privilege to watch. It's been five days since Sulawesi macaque Lisa gave birth to baby Han. Looking after him is a full-time job, as it is for any mum. All primates, ourselves included, they will caretake the offspring and breastfeed up until the point where they can begin weaning. They'll carry that baby with them at all times. There are plenty of relatives keen to help Lisa out. Family is also important, so the group plays an integral role in making sure that those babies are safe and looked after also. If a baby's there, everybody's fascinated and everybody wants to, to meet that new arrival. It's a bit like people where you have everyone come round your house in the space of two days, but obviously they're in an enclosure and they can't shut a door and go, thank God no one's coming round anymore, we're not inviting anyone else round. They're not delicate with them at all. They pull on their arms, they pull on their legs, they just, they're just so inquisitive when they find a new baby. Two weeks after giving birth, and macaque mum Lisa and her baby Han are still finding themselves the centre of attention. The baby arriving into a group is just such an absolutely fascinating thing. And sometimes people can get a little bit overexcited. The group's lower ranking females all want to be seen with the new baby to raise their status in the hierarchy. But mum isn't willing to let go. Lisa's quite a feisty character because of where her position is with the group. If she's not happy, she'll vocalise. She doesn't want that attention. <laughs> With tempers rising, Lisa needs a rest and a babysitter she can trust. Beaker is Lisa's son. Generally, male macaques have the specific role of defending territory and obviously mating the females. Traditionally, they're not that bothered about babies, but Beaker's fascinated with the new arrival and he's spending quite a lot of time around his mum. With mum struggling, Beaker decides he's the man for the job. Like all mothers with young, Asha is at her strongest and most formidable right now. She's looking out for anything that could harm her baby, including the herd of brow antlered deer they share their paddock with. A male stag deer is um, quite confident and he's not afraid to take on even the rhino. You don't want the deer doing that with the baby. The deer could hurt the little one if mum's not paying close enough attention. He's a typical male deer, isn't he? Yeah. He's got an attitude when he's got his antlers. He likes to think he rules the paddock. He's having a little look, but... Uh... Asher knows how to deal with the deer. Aquino has seen how it's done. Perhaps not yet. But the biggest danger in the paddock for Aquino could really test his mum, because it's the one thing that Asha loves best. The pond. Asha obviously goes in the pool a lot. We know that she's at some point going to go in. What's Aquino going to do? He is a rhino, he should know how to swim. But our main concern is, once he gets in, how is he going to get out? Asha decides not to introduce Aquino to the pond, at least for now. Give it a... <laughs> Poke it with a stick. 
He was a bit anxious at first. You saw him um, come up to the cobbles and then back away. No. <laughs> Yay! And then he just saw his mum outside and was like, right, I'm going to do it. Oh, look how little he looks. The need to follow her was probably stronger than his fear of, like, something new. to see him standing out there with everyone. When they're mixed outside, it's scary for the first time. It's a large environment for such a small animal. I think you're constantly um, on edge because every little movement he makes, you're like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't slip. Oh, I hope he's, hope he's going to right himself. Here he goes. It's nerve-wracking to watch a giraffe run for the first time, because the legs are all over shop. They're not sure where the brakes are. They go running out, uh, not know when to stop. Uh, and uh, normally, if one sets off, uh, they all go crazy. Yeah, the moat's easy. If they go in the moat, they can just climb out of the cell. If it's the canal, that's the, uh, the more harder one to fish them out of. I was a little bit concerned at first because I didn't know why he didn't want to go outside. But to finally get him outside, you know, it's a great achievement. It's a success. At the Pygmy Marmoset habitat, there are also new arrivals. Audrey has given birth to twins overnight. It's really exciting because whenever we have any babies, it feels like an achievement and also it's obviously nice for them to have new additions. That takes our group up to six and that's a really good size for a family group of Pygmy Marmosets. The babies are Audrey's fifth set of twins. I mean, they tend to have twins because the survival rate of offspring is quite low. It's about 25% in the wild. So it's really important that the mum keeps hold of them, carries them around. They need to be with her 24 seven because they're completely helpless when they're born. Audrey needs to carry the babies for at least eight weeks. They're not massive, but obviously, I was Audrey, so it is a lot of weight for her to carry around. Even in the safety of the zoo, the twins will be extremely vulnerable in the first few weeks of their lives. With the five sets of twins that she's had here, um, we lost a set of twins. And then we had a set for about a month, and then one of them died, unfortunately. Scamp was originally a twin but unfortunately she lost the other one. It was quite healthy, I think, until about 10 days old, and then it just dropped down dead. We just came in one morning and he was on the floor. Maybe if they've jumped and knocked him and he's fallen, that's, you know, what's most likely to have happened, really. They're both clinging on well at the minute, so hopefully we're gonna get two healthy little babies. When the babies are born, they weigh about 16 grams, so you can imagine just how small and delicate they are. There's always risks. The likelihood of both surviving is quite low, so you're always a bit scared. 